Hello everybody and welcome back to the Contest Realm podcast. This is episode 15. If you're not familiar with the podcast, then you should know by now that you'll find us on YouTube. We do have a special playlist, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes. Now, episode 15 is going to focus on a lot of stuff that's newsy related and stuff that we know of in the last week. And especially picking up on some information I think a lot of people want us to discuss. Now, my co-host, as you know, is uh, Dan Frontline MCC. He is on Twitter. He is on his site, which is Frontline dot blog now frontline mcc dot blog links are in the description you should make it your home page and as well on youtube with as dan bruge is it bruge or uh baruby 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 i thought yeah. i gave you more of like a bruge i gave you more of a french kind of it, like it is french it. is it okay well i'm, sort, I'm sort of there um but yes <laughs> my friend my co-host hello Good week to Hey, you. Rich. How are we doing, man? Yeah, good. We were, we've just, prior to the podcast starting, we were talking about where we're, where we're up to, thoughts and stuff. Uh, Dan's been doing a lot of the destructive feedback, which is a bit of a scuffy old piece of poop from uh, 6.2.4. <laughs> uh, I've just done a... Uh, I just finished Act 6 Initial Clear, going against that Grand Master fight, and uh, had a bit of a rough time with it. Um and as well, following the pressures of having, uh, getting wedding stuff sorted out is, um, certainly means for fun times, but we're here, we're here to talk MCC. We're here, there's a lot going on, you know, let's, let's start off with, the people want to know, did, did your hair care, uh, fudge urban sea salt come in? Have you restocked? It, it did, it did. I was yes. contacted by somebody on Twitter who said, no, oh, it's out of stock. And I was like, well, lucky for us in the UK, we've got plentiful supply, which is actually really weird. I used the last part of the bottle and I must I must state the last part of the bottle may, makes it kind of like turn to like concrete. So like when I've got like a head, <laughs> I've got this headset on it and like as soon as I take the headset off, I suspect my hair is going to go Bing! and just like go <laughs> stick up on edge again. It's super concentrated down at the bottom, huh? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Unless that somebody's been putting some extra kind of product in it, I don't know. Like, um, well, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think it could be that love juice from Deadpool. Who knows? From back in uh, oh, February, Deadpool's love juice shenanigans with the love juice that that is so on point for him. Yeah, and he's he's sort of been causing mischief over the last. He seems to be making more of a big push to be in the the battle realm and and just be about in general in the last couple of months. February. Yeah, Deadpool, he needs to chill. He is, like, everywhere right now. Yeah. He's trying to make it into the MCU. He's trying to make it into every every facet of MCOC. He just wants to take over the world. Yeah, and even with his new uh, Forbidden Crystals, who, you know, yes. I, I, I've mentioned that it, they look a bit like um, a prophylactic. Um, obviously, uh, you can Google what that is, but I can't <laughs> use the word just in case I get in trouble um with the powers that be but that's something that we're going to talk about um today yeah episode yes. 15 so much to talk about today yep what's um, going on i think we'll begin with a little bit of the marvel realm stuff and then we'll get into the mcoc marvel realm through the state of just nothing's been going on i've i've heard rumors of things that might be for some people getting beta i've heard rumors of other things um i actually caused a bit of an upset i will let people know about this a little bit of an upset with uh kabam thel and uh, the kabam people because of a video i posted on rich's realm uh i don't know oh, did, no. did, did, did you see that that video heard I about did, that video? i did watch the video as soon as i saw that headline <laughs> it said has someone played mco uh and m uh m r o c and you know i tuned in to hear that sweet m rock news intro <laughs> um uh, but i was like ooh, i was like rich is gonna be ruffling some jimmies with this title yeah and i did um, you did what it what happened rich? well Thel got in contact with me and said you gave me a heart attack and i was like <laughs> um uh yeah <laughs> basically and to like uh cut right to the point Somebody on one of these sites that offers the APK, I use this bunny years APK for the site, for the for the game, which as isn't actually the case. Many people did. I said, don't click on stuff because obviously you don't know what's going to happen from it. Somebody did click on it and said it just takes you to the Marvel Realm of Champions site. So basically somebody's done a fake review uh, on an assumption basis, but use certain points to kind of alloc- uh, um, Uh, give this idea that they had actually reviewed and actually played it which in fact they haven't Uh, so 
in, in any case, I, I kind of, I covered it. I felt this would be a good video to kind of uh, bring traffic and awareness to the second channel, which I've created for Marvel Realm of Champions, because that seems to be the thing. I think we'll get many of this, much of this feedback in the future, Dan, is that mm. um, bringing these two things together, people are very, um, I wouldn't say militant, but they're very, they're very specific on having them separated out because they may not want what Marvel Realm of Champions has to offer. And obviously that may change. We don't know when, when eventually right. we get to play the game. But that's the question I want to throw over to you, Dan. Do you think that during all this kind of like time we've been in lockdown um, with so many so many people at home, is this a, a little bit of a wasted opportunity for Kabam not to put out things like trailers in the last like month or so, early access bundles and uh, betas and APKs as well? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot of eyeballs, right? Yeah. And I think we had talked about that article before that that showed that the stocks of a lot of the mobile gaming companies are up because their mm. sales are up because, well, what else are you going to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's certainly the opportunity to get eyeballs. The, uh, the pushback, of course, on that is, well, can you actually stay on schedule? Is management nervous about launching... A paid promotion during a pandemic mm. um can you even if you wanted to could you could you get all the materials you need you know if you've got to get promotional videos done or or, or whatever whatever you're trying to do get a beta open like mm. can you actually hit those deadlines right now with your workforce or um are you just not there yet i mean we do, we don't know i mean we're still guessing we don't have a announced release date we don't have gameplay so we don't know what what exactly they have on their roadmap as far as as dates and whether they're pushing stuff back or not i mean that's the one that's the one thing about not announcing stuff yeah that that is good right because we can't be mad at them for missing deadlines they haven't announced mm. that's... <laughs> so they may be blowing through them they may be right on schedule we have no idea yeah i know other games are taking a good um advantage of the situation not advantage it's not really taking advantage but they're using it as yeah. a good opportunity to promote um and as well i've gone through another week of getting constant marvel strike force adverts Mar and... marvel strike force is all over the place yeah they're, I... they're everywhere they're they're going hard right now yeah and as much as people would complain at like myself for taking on raid shadow legends deals and like other people for taking on other kind of deals it, and i see no nobody really getting funny about them doing it so it's like it it's it's a bit of a bit of a weird situation where mobile games do want to promote obviously foxnet are real really behind marvel strike force to get promoting it but uh i'm excited for something different and what obviously they have to offer them with this game but we'll have to see what happens yeah we'll we'll have to see um you know Thel, if you're listening we you know rich and i if you do want to give some people access <laughs> to test things out and give a, a give a real review i think you know i don't want to speak for for rich but i'm i'm pretty sure he'd be as into it as i would be so yeah you know just the offer the, the offer is a standing one guys if you're if you're listening and you need a little help need a little little customer perspective we're happy to supply that for yeah. you guys. Um, now, they have started to accelerate the release of the houses, right? Because yeah. they've released two in the last month. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. uh, did you notice Did you notice what happened to Apocalypse? Didn't he change the, the design? He, he did change. He, there was a significant change uh, from, from the concept art to the actual in-game model yeah. uh, for Apocalypse. Did you notice what was missing? What had been omitted? Oh, I, I was looking at this yesterday because I was. Um, <laughs> was it something to do uh, um, to do with the nipples? Yep, the nipple yeah. rings are gone. Yeah, because the nipple I, rings did not make the final cut. <laughs> I, yeah, I designed the PNG yesterday, um, not on Friday. <laughs> when it was like, I don't know if anybody, um, if obviously saw the video, you, you checked that. But yeah, like I think it was because he's more broadly stretched out now in, in mm. the, his demeanor. Uh, it does look very much like it's it's got more of a an MCOC design to it as opposed to it being more M rock. I'm just trying to like grab the image now. Yeah. I'll put I'll put links for people if they do want to like check out uh, stuff. But my word, oh yeah, yeah a little before and after <laughs> the nipple rings. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. Yeah, ah, uh, oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Um, okay, right. 
we've done. Can you imagine? Do you think? Do you think that was an actual discussion? Like they got around a conference table and debated it? <laughs> yeah, he's he's too hipster, guys. He's too hipster. <laughs> He's got he's got nipple rings, you know. It, it, was that something that was like ancient Egypt? I don't know. Um, you just yep. imagine the someone that's very kind of like into their fashion just going, "Well, I thought it was fabulous. Um, <laughs> I loved it." Uh, <laughs> but but that's 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 something. <laughs> Um, right, let's let's get back to MCOC, and obviously I've yes. time coded a lot of stuff as well for people to check out. Uh, but obviously we like to do our bits to see what's up with Marvel Realm of Champions. I assume we'll be Absolutely. doing a lot more in the future. Um, we're going to kick things off with uh, Merc Services, something that uh, has been about in gaming for a very very long time. Dan, have you yeah. ever come across any Merc Services in in like your your tenure of uh, of playing um, computer games in general? Uh, not, not really. I mean, I know, I know they're out there and I know a couple times, um, where we've been recruiting, we've, we've been vetting people and found out that they're mercs and have not accepted them into the Alliance. Hmm. Uh, so it's really, it's really been more on that side of it, but yeah, I certainly know they're out there and there is one Merc that runs a very large, uh, Facebook, um, mcoc uh page mm. this is the this is the issue i mean in in gaming in general the merc services have been around for a very long time i mean for me uh and as i've said in videos so people would will know this uh 2004 world of warcraft uh i played since the beginning on that one and then kind of decided to quit um a little bit later on runescape as well very very long time ago used to play that and it was there and so many other games out there the fifa the fifa community would know that people are people doing like merc services with there to kind of boost rankings and things like that so it's Mm. pretty much out there um but i think it was given more of a uh platform to talk about when lagacy released his video about the whole kind of situation him being denied a legends run number because of merc services to a point that there seemed to be just so many receipts on the extent of just just unfairness and uh, yeah it was pretty brazen right yeah <laughs> just i mean the 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 merc took a big victory lap on mm. this one which yeah. is is was you know i think it, Legacy was upset about missing, but I think the fact that uh, the the guy was that out there, right, with the receipts, yeah, and the and the times, and be like, oh, you know, thanks so much, you know, like the the uh, you know the what was it, the money back guarantee and everything, like he was he was yeah. using is like, see, I get results, <laughs> you know, it's like his you know his quality assurance campaign for his yeah. marketing services really upset him. Yeah, and I just don't know how... And as I said, it, this has been in gaming for a very long time. E- mobile gaming right the way through to PC and console. So how Kabam would deal with this would be incredibly difficult. Because that would be the th- that's the thing. A lot of people are kind of, well, pointing at Kabam and going, well, what are you going to do about it? And it's, right. it's very difficult to actually do anything about this. And, you know, you, you kind of look at this... Uh, in a sense that going right well what do they have to do now every account has to be fingerprint recognized uh in future you know that would be the only way they could resort something like this out from a mobile game perspective but that that's excessive that's too excessive yeah. for a mobile game i mean my my one question on this is we know what the abyss of um legends um legend uh runs there they waited a long time to announce those mm-hmm. right like people were just like why hasn't been announced yet why hasn't been announced yet? It's like, well we're we're checking everything manually right it's like okay and i don't remember an uproar about mercs for the abyss of legends legends runs no now does that mean that there were no merc runs in there no but it, it means there was no there was no hoopla about it and the general consensus seems to be that Kabam did a good job vetting the abyss of Legends Legends runs. Mm. So the question to Kabam is, well, did you guys follow the same process for Act 6.4 that you followed with Abyss of Legends when it comes to vetting the Legends runs? Uh, and if you didn't, 
why that's a good uh, because that seemed to be that seemed to be well received by the community right like the community was okay with waiting mm. at the end of the day because the consensus seemed to be that that a, a good job was done vetting those so um you know if, did you guys do the same thing if you didn't was it because of the pandemic because you thought it was too much work that you didn't think it was worth it uh did you do it and the mercs figured it out this time <laughs> like we I, I don't know that we're ever going to get those answers but that's the first question that jumps to my mind because we have uh you know in the pretty recent past an example of of abyss of legends uh legends runs being pretty well received so yeah. I, I don't know we're, we're you know we're never going to get that answer we're never going to get the answer um about what exactly are you doing to stop mercs because then the mercs would know it gets another one of those things it's like I yeah. think there's people that just want Kabam to shout on the mountaintop every day, you know, Mercs are bad, we're trying to ban all the Mercs. It's like, I, I think they are, I, I think they know that Mercs are bad and they want to stop them. Mm. Um, but it's like, can you, you can't scream till you're blue in the face about it, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, like, with we're, We all think they're bad, like, Mercs are bad, kick them out. And the real issue, of course, is people that create an economically viable system to enable the mercs yeah the people that hire the mercs are the real problem yeah the mercs go away if no one's paying that's true yeah uh even even bot services which i think now because a lot of it has been uh done via uh blue stacks that's kind of eliminated a lot of the uh the mod system which obviously mm. that site which i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give any kind of promotion to i don't know if they're doing much at the moment however though there are mercs that are doing stuff when it comes to arena services and i saw oh sure uh somebody doing a storm pyramid x run for somebody and it's just yeah. and i think it was uh well, with, yeah it's arena they do teams Ugh. so they can just grind all day you know you're not that's the real thing about the arena murking that's terrible is like you're not even it's not even one-on-one -on -one. it's mm. not even you versus the merc it's like you versus two or three people <laughs> <laughs> They're just gonna grind twenty four hours a day, right? And yeah. and can can shift, uh, you know, like that's how they they break it up into shifts. It's crazy. That's yeah, and that's the thing. This will be unless Kabam, and that's obviously an excellent point that Dan made. Was just well, if they've done it through one medium of of stuff like the abyss of legends then why hasn't this been done for a uh, legacy situation when it comes to the 6.4 legends run uh, and as well at times of the re arena and here's the but this, i guess the sad thing is that kabam look at it in they they deal with it after the prizes have been given and it's the case they yep. either remove the prizes or rewards if that's the case i'm not 100 percent sure that they would they do that they may even keep it on the account and ban the account or serve a um a, a ban penalty of some description i i don't know because when i look through the terms of service it doesn't separate out things into you get three strikes and you're out although we do know it to be something similar to you have a 24 hour ban a 72 hour ban and then a permanent ban um but there's no kind of like i've not found any kind of clear classification on the matter because i get and i don't know i think we talked about this before dan that we get contacted by people that are saying our account my account has been banned they were uh, i or they were playing legitimately and as a result uh i am now banned and then you say well um have you ever shared your account have you done uh, have you done something fraudulent have you done this or this and a lot of times they say oh no i was playing without any kind of issue i wasn't sharing my account and stuff but i don't know that person you don't know that person right. and we're effectively trying to defend somebody that we don't know personally their experience i'll give you an example somebody said that their their partner they 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 were using their wife's phone to log into the account but they were in the same location and they pinged it five times to say they were like playing on one account on one phone and then get then was playing on the, their partner's phone I was doing this five times repetitively. Now, I'll give you a good example of, of that, and that's actually happened here. So, M, when we're doing recording videos, we'll have her log into my iPhone, uh, my iPhone 7 Plus, and then on my iPhone 11 Pro is where I where I do my, like, account stuff. And it will basically yep. be a case that that account login between M's account and my account will be pinging left, right, and center over two different phones. Same scenario. And I haven't received a ban. M hasn't received a ban as a result. So, it, it, again, like in these scenarios, it is 
Arkabam looking at a situation like that going, oh, that's a Merc service thing that could be, could be um, you know, happening at the moment? Or are they looking at something going, okay, well, that device is, or that uh, account has been pinged from being here in the UK in the southwest to then going over to some country in the Middle East? I guess it's, this is the thing of trying to find out how Kabam are tackling it and how they were able to do the Abyss of Legends thing yeah. but aren't able to do something like this. It's a very sticky situation, like a sticky key. Mm, like a sticky key. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it's tricky. You know, I, I understand why it gets the headlines and why it gets people so upset. And I think unfortunately it's one of those things right like if you if you want to get a legends badge if you want to get the featured champ in the five star arena you just you have to you have to bake that in Mm. right like you can you can get mad about it but if you really want the the prize and you feel like it's worth it you just have to know that at least a portion of the playing field is not going to be on the level yeah it's it's terrible to say but it's you just you kind of have to deal with it, you know. If you're playing at your own pace, it's not really going to impact you. But yeah, certainly at the top, it does. That's true, and especially if you're doing it for like YouTube. I mean, I'm happy. With what I, I think you and me are kind of same, but we're happy of taking this game as a enjoying it, trying to enjoy it like casually, trying to keep yep. up with other people, not going in for like mass grinding, but just trying to enjoy the finer things in life. So, I think that's right. I think it's now, let's move on to something a bit more positive and talk about the return of Rifts. And first of all, Rifts. talk about Rifts themselves, move on to the targets and Platinum Pool. So Rifts are back, Dan. How are you, uh, how are you feeling about this? Uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, it seemed like there was a bit of mass confusion about the, the steps this month. Yeah. Um, the last couple of months, I, I feel like the, uh, the, the side quests need a bit of an instruction manual for for people yeah so i know you did a video there's a lot of videos um sort of breaking it down but i feel like now that we're in the groove um it's really seems to be that the talk now is is about well do i buy the uh the chronometer or not i, don't, I like the way you say chronometer yeah. chronometer <laughs> chronometer i i've reached a point whatever now, it is i i just uh, i i don't i don't really care how it's pronounced i'm next thing i'm gonna call it something like the um and um, chronopometer or something like that I, <laughs> just for the hell of it just yeah. hell of it, just change up yeah i mean for me i'm i, I don't know i had somebody uh, and many people like and there was a forum post that was created about this which i couldn't integrate into a video i put out on saturday but i put into pinned comments in the description mm. where somebody said the idea would be to get 3500 intel and then take the 500 intel and go into a rift and see if there's anything there that you want then if there is then you come then you come out say if that for me say it's a skill awakening gem mm. come out by the chronometer and then it's a case that you can then go down the path to get it and then you'll be able to do a further rift after that and i was i, was, I, don't, I still don't know if it's it's something that i would on paper that sounds like a, that the right thing to do but I, I don't i don't know if it's something that many other people will actually adopt as a thing but I'm not making any decisions until I picked up the chronometer because that skill awakening gem is too is too needed, yeah, I, wanted, and desired for me at the moment. Yeah, I think if you're gonna buy the chronometer, you you have to have champ in your roster that you need the awakening gem for. I I think that's the only reason to give up the extra five runs. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I think I'm just gonna go random and take the full eighteen and just see uh, see what Lady Luck has in store for me. That sounds like a cool thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I've seen your other question: Is the energy spend for this too high? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no because this is a five week uh, event quest month. Yeah. So once you factor that in, I think people are burning through energy anyway because they're at home a lot. And mm. I think over the course of five weeks, you're gonna be like, all right, well, yeah, yeah, I got everything done. It's it's the if you want to do everything in the first three days, well, yeah, then the energy spends a little bit high. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, I see a lot, a lot of people kind of saying about that, and 
uh, it's one of these things where if you're looking at doing them all in one day, all of the riffs, by the way, you can do that. You can save up your intel and go into like multiple riffs or have like a big day. And maybe yeah. I even do that. Dan, you've said about doing it, doing a stream where you're just doing multiple riffs in, in one in one given day and seeing what lady, yeah. lady luck has for you. Then, yeah, you're going to notice a huge expense on your energy uh, spend but if you're doing it on a daily basis then it's the case you'll be going right well I'm effectively doing a rift a day for free uh, mm. so that's that's something uh, I don't know if Caban plan to do anything more for us when it comes to an energy calendar for for the, for this month would they do anything for the people that are you know still still on lockdown I, I'm not sure I think it was just like two we had two months and we had did we have something in early March Mid March, and then we've had something later March. Yeah, I think it was the feeling. Yeah, because they give us the energy calendar early, and then we get that the bonus yeah. uh, feeling green thing. Yeah, so they've done a few things, but yeah, I mean, this month is it does feel a little light on content, especially for a five week month. Mm. Uh, so I'm hoping that there's something coming down the road in a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, something. I, mean, I don't know if it would be like an integration event for say something for for m rock or maybe it's the case they're limiting the side quest mm. in order to say like look come over and play uh marvel realm of champions i don't know it was one of these things where i was hoping for a variant five yeah me too to drop um as you know just kind of like you know i like variant. i mean you like this dan we like yeah. variant variants because it just breaks up it's fun you know if it's permanent content wise it's not so rigorous or also uh roster dependent as doing act sixes so you know it's just it would just be nice to see that yep but how how are we kind of like thinking about feeling about these these targets and ops it seems to be that we've got this it's like dual skirmish has been revitalized all of a sudden for this. A little bit, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know they're in the event quest, but I think the community, as always, wants to take the straight line path to <laughs> complete the objective, right? So yeah. you get it's like, all right, well, who's got who's got a Wolverine? Who's got a saber tooth? Uh, who's got Drax in their profile? They just want to want to want to do the one duel and uh, and get it over with. Yeah, so, I, I think it's been cool. I like the two star bit for the um the the daily quest yeah I think that's been fun because i've been able to um play some champions i don't have so my my big thing has been uh you know building up my two-star captain marvel movie <laughs> and taking uh taking it to that taskmaster with uh with the binary ignition nice so that's been that's been fun for me yeah so, I've, yeah I've I'm, been, I'm enjoying that i've been going back to wolverine uh, just mm -hmm. bleeds regenerations and whatnot. I um I've also been playing about as you, same with you, Cat Marvel movie. I've got a, a two star Beardo which I've been utilizing as well. That's oh, been nice. quite quite fun. Uh, but yeah, having these nice little kind of these little gems uh to just ping up and use, especially having these access to these junior crystals allows people pe uh, players to pick up those two stars, which I guess is handy for stuff like variant four and that particular quest. Yeah. Um. Fun for the collectors. Yeah, absolutely. Fun for the collectors. And I, I do like collecting some obscure ones. I know that there's a very limited sense of one stars available, and that's something that we'll, we'll talk mm. about in a moment. Still an issue. Yeah, yeah. still a big issue. Um, okay, and with the, uh, the targets and with the rifts, also Platinum Pool. Platinum Pool. Platinum Pool. Yeah, um fun weird mechanic i mean i haven't like gone and in investigated more with this but it it seems on the outset that it's a champion that the more you face him the more harder he gets hmm i haven't faced him yet so it's it's weird because i feel like when they when they announced gold pool right mm. like that felt like it took over the game yeah <laughs> you know like there was the arenas there was the the pools gold crystals and everyone was doing openings and popping them and people wanted him and like the platinum pool thing seems to be flying under the radar a bit so i'm a little i'm a little confused about what the what the plan is here with platinum pool yeah i wonder if he'd be a playable character or not it seems that he they've create i want to uh, i'm pretty certain i've seen something where they've created synergies around him and you wouldn't yeah. create a synergy around a champion that was going to be just a champion in a quest that's that's right. a you'd, vision you'd, yeah to yeah. create yeah as a as a champion that you'd get from crystals so 
it gives another opportunity to grab him. And he, obviously, it's going to be just another one of these. I, I don't really know. I mean, it's it's nice to see these kind of obscure variants on oh. certain champions, but um, I I don't know. I think a lot of players will be happy to see a new Deadpool film or Disney Plus yes. series and an integration in game with uh, Marvel Contest of Champions. I mean, the Kabam's Canadian. You know, they can get Ryan Reynolds to to star. That's in right. Yeah, he's available. He's not doing anything. Yeah, exactly. They could, <laughs> they could do some integration. He could he could take a, a day off from uh, beefing with Hugh Jackman to do a little uh, extra Deadpool work, right? Yeah, I like that. Um, Forbidden Crystals <laughs> come with the Platinum Pool. Obviously, we've we've kind of joked. I've joked about the design of them and uh, what they resemble. Um, but uh, <laughs> Forbidden Crystals give <laughs> units and gold, so that's not too bad. If you're collecting uh, in the region of, I'd say, eighteen uh, for that um, for the for the rifts, then you know you you may uh, you may have a big opening by the end of the month and see. Yeah. Do they drop a nice amount of units or not? It's a nice opportunity. Hopefully, could use some units. Uh, remember, folks, save up Fourth of July. Only two months away. You want to have that fifteen k units? Oh yeah, that's going to be some good yeah. stuff on offer for that. Mm, good deal. Um, okay, thoughts on the doubloons event? Because that was something that I, I think it had a mixed reaction. Obviously, you know, games need to run from a financial point of view. Caban may have pre-scheduled in the event, but it was very much. Focused on those that spend in the game as opposed to those that maybe are free to play. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a sales event. There's mm. no, I mean, there's no arguing that. I mean, it was clearly, it was clearly a spring sale. Yeah. I think, like you said, there there was a a heated minority about this mm. uh, of the, the free to play uh, players. There were some of them that were, were very upset with it. I think some people were just got upset about the word event. They're like, well, if it's an event... Why, why do I have to pay to do it? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, all right. So, like, are we getting hung up on the word? I, all right, fine. Um, I mean, they gave us 15,000 for free, which means you could either get 2,000 five-star shards or 1,000 six-star shards for doing nothing. Yeah, I and mean, that's pretty good. So that good. was pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's hard to get 1,000 six-star shards. Mm. like it's it's still way too hard to get a thousand six six star shards so i was uh <laughs> i was happy with that um i just i bought one dollar pack just so i had one star pool you got mm. me yeah and, uh, invested in some more but i decided to whale out on um on an odin uh actually turned out to be a pretty good purchase nice yeah picked up a six star corvus that works. That that is very acceptable. Yeah, it was uh, kind. Of, yeah, I was say, it was kind of weird because it came at a week when I got a tweet from Hollywood Shono, and uh, then yes. I got a message from Discord from uh, Lawrence Clark, who said to me, uh, "Oh, both said, oh, was it? Yeah, picked up a six star Corvus." And I was like talking about it in the video, like, "Oh, you know, six star Corvus. I've seen that. I've seen plenty of people this picking up six star Corvus, six star Corvus, and it's like, boom!" And I was like. What? There you go. It just—it's so weird, isn't it? Especially when you're talking about a certain champion, and then it's mm. like, boom! It just hits. It's like, is my device listening to me or something? Hopefully, I wish it would work that way more often. <laughs> <laughs> I want a gone. Dan, what do you want? Uh, who do I want? I want Heimdall, Heimdall, so I can actually finish Act Six sometime mm. in the next two years without spending all the units. Nice. I so. I think that's a good shout. I yeah. probably will be ranking up a few other. I mean, I've done the Act Six. I need to do the opening um, for, for Act Six and see what see what I get. I could even get mm-hmm. Aegon. Who knows? Yeah, um, something to change the roster. Heimdall is. Yeah, I I do want that champion. That's that's hopefully something that's going to enter into the arena at some point to grab. Because uh, I got yeah, four- I would I would definitely have to grind for heimdall there's a couple that i would like i'd like angela for um incursions too oh i'd oh, love her as yeah. a six star six star angela for incursions would be awesome mm. um so uh, yeah you know a couple champs for that just kind of fill out the uh fill out the roster you know um but I, I i don't know i might do i might do a featured grind for an older champ mm. at some point uh during this whole stay-at-home mess 
So yeah. we'll we'll see. We'll see. It's gotta I'm, be the right one. Gotta be. Gotta have time. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm up for kind of like doing incursions again and, and other other content where it's not so. Sp- I've had. To, oh, that was another thing during the Grand Master fight. I decided to switch my masteries back to non suicides, as mm-hmm. it it just was not working with that fight because I was. At the end of the day, if you have gone in with, say, 40% and then you've revived yourself, if you're going in and ticking off that damage based on... and you, The champion I was using was um, was Beardo. Yep. And I didn't... Because of the, the, the route that I took, most of the champions were to deal with the problems that I was, I'd go on that route. And mm-hmm. as a result, it meant that I wasn't taking in a full extent of my kit so, you know, it wasn't taken in a chance. And as well, like being 80%, it's not 100% with the signature ability. But I wanted to use Beardo because you've got um, SP1 inflicts a, a debuff, uh, not a debuff, a damage over time. Um, and then you've also got things like, uh, uh, you know, just, just very kind of robust glancing and just strong block proficiency, which was just one of the reasons. Uh, and I know that champion a lot. Um, so I'm like, well, I, I was going to use that one. But I was finding, again, getting to the point, because uh, I've gone off tangent, is that mm. the bleed damage was just kind of like meaning I was ticking out just so much that I just became a bit like, well, I start with the bleed. It's not really working out too well. Um, and like partway through, I was like, this isn't working at all. So I had to switch back to yeah. a normal mastery setup, which is good because I, I'd said to myself, right, I'll do... Suicides worked great for doing 6.3 and 6.4, but if I'm looking for exploration, I'm going to have to go back to um, to, to non-suicides for the future. And as well, it's handy because I'll go back to alliances next week and um, and just look to get myself more involved. So that's kind of important. And as well as what well, I'd say as well with the um, Red Guardian fight of the uh, an uncollected this month, I, I felt that I've undermined myself having. Not to say suicides are bad, but I just would think mm-hmm. it would have been better for me to actually be uh, non-suicide masteries uh, against that. How, how did you fare against the uh, Red Guardian boss, or did you? Did you, you know, I haven't. Course? I haven't taken him on in Uncollected, but it seems like the reception overall has been pretty good. I mm. haven't seen uh, that forum post uh, about how the Uncollected boss is a uh, complete money grab yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> that I know. Yeah. I, usually usually sometime wednesday night when the eq drops there's, there's the first one it's like okay maybe 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 we we take a little bit of time and see how this plays out before we <laughs> before we start using that term and wait wait for the guides yeah so it seems like it seems like he's been relatively easy for uh people to to figure out so but That's i good. i haven't i haven't gone that far in i've been kind of working on uh, like we've been talking about Act Six Point Two, yeah. Um, in in the time that I have for sort of the high level questing so far, yeah. Um, what? So how are you finding it at the moment with having available time? Because that's the thing, isn't it? With the stuff with alliance based participation that you do, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it's been more of a bri- like a real breeze because I've if I've woken up and gone, um, like on a, on a Saturday last week, I think I did about uh, I did six point. Uh, 4.1 right the way through to 6.1.3 um, and mm. and then just went to bed straight after that so it was like, it was nice to not concentrate on anything else but how are you finding it it's tough right because what i'm trying to do is run a um a path of um of act six in between the aq resets right uh-huh. so if my uh, you know if my alliance can clear by about one o'clock local time and it resets about three three thirty i've got a two three theoretically i've got a two hour window now if real life sneaks in then my one chance to do that for the day is gone Mm. (laughs) so really it really depends if every you know if everything's playing ball and i can get myself an hour window in there because right now that destructive feedback i'm running in 6.2.4 those are 35 to 40 minute 45 minute paths for me. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, that's with rank two, six stars and maxed out five stars. They, they're just long fights. You have to be yeah. real careful. And that Kingpin boss just takes forever to, yeah. to get down. I, I really wish I had an Aegon because I, I imagine you can really ramp him up with a lot of hits in these quests. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's the thing we've talked about, right? 
I've already run five paths and I've got five more to go <laughs> for a hundred percent. Yeah. It just, it takes a long time. And sometimes you just look at it and you're just like, I'm just not in the mood for it today. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that is exactly the same point as I've got. Like I, I do appreciate what Kabam do when they put together content, but it's, it's a case like, like I'm even like thinking I'm thinking about what I'm doing on uh, next weekend already, and I'm thinking like yeah. Friday in the UK is a, a bank holiday, so there's there's going to be uh, opportunity to do stuff, and like I'm I'm going to order some stuff and just work on my gardens, I got on my front garden and back garden. I I actually fancy nice. doing that more than I I like the idea of going through some Act Six paths. I, mm. def- I definitely know. By the way, anybody listening to this. Take some time outside. If you're an intense grinder of the game, take a bit of time to go outside and, and just oh, yes. like get some fresh air. Uh, especially like I've even taken up running. Like oh, um, and I, I tell you what, because I've I've been so devoted to making videos and and things like that and being inside all the time. What I miss is like going for a run for about like even ten minutes to twenty minutes. Just is so important. And when you come back, like you're. Your headspace just feels so mm. much clearer, focused. I mean, yep. I felt so more, so much more refocused since since actually putting more exercise in my in my day to day well being. And I strongly would suggest anybody just like go for a quite energetic walk, and so you kind of like feel, hear yourself breathing a little bit more. Uh, yeah, just as the world of good, and and also oh, spending, absolutely spending time with family. I suspect during a lot of this time, you've. Um, you, you know, your son and, and yourself have been doing like more kind of things and obviously oh, keeping yeah. your distance, but you know. Yeah. It's, you know, it's tough with, uh, now that we're finally getting a little nicer weather here, it's great that we can get outside, but then it's, you just really start to feel like you miss things. Mm. You, like yesterday was, we had, we had like a week straight of rain and it was finally like 65 and sunny, which I don't know what that is for you, but it's like, you know, a nice, a nice yeah. spring nice. day. Right. Yeah. So, um, you're just like, Oh, like normally I would take him to the playground. I would take him to a park. Like we would, we would do something, you know, we, we played in the backyard and it was fine. And, but I'm, I'm starting to get that sense. It's like, ah, oh, like it's really gonna, we're really going to start to miss some stuff. So you, you're right. You do have to take those timeout moments and just, uh, you know, enjoy the simple pleasures in life. Yeah. Go for a walk. We, it's, we, it's good. We all need a timeout mentally. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Uh, especially when stuff like it seems to be better now and it's something that i was going to raise as a a topic about uh game stability drops in connection and performance issues it seems to be better as of today playing the game and it seemed to be seen with saturday and friday kind of coming into the point of actually performing well Mm -hmm. but i was finding on wednesday because i think the game went down briefly on wednesday it did it did go down yeah, they did do emergency maintenance after the event quest dropped. Mm. And I think it was like normally when a new update goes in, I, I kind of feel that there's this this kind of 24 hour period where the, the game is either going to perform really well and like everything's mm. on point or it performs uh, less than adequately. Uh, but I think they've they've relatively got it sorted I just don't know, obviously, what's going to happen as of tomorrow. And this is why I wanted to get my Grand Master fight done because right. we've we've got the uh, the beta dropping tomorrow, which is going to be giving us yeah, the betas idea. are always a thing. Yeah, whether or not it yep. causes um, low lo- load problems, uh, stability issues, because essentially we're just like a small doorway and we're just thrusting everything through it. And it right, and be- there's going to be huge demand for this. Oh beta. yeah. Um, I still don't know the extent of like what we're able to cover. I'm gonna have to look over the notes of that. Of like, are we able to do videos on it, talk about it? Because it kind of feels like we're meant to be. This is meant to be a surprise, but it's not meant to be a surprise because literally everybody gets to. Yeah, in the beta. I think it's a public beta. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of people saying they're gonna stream it, and I certainly haven't. Uh, I haven't seen any pushback mm. yet on that. So I think it's I think it's just a big old public beta. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what the extent. I mean, it, it's going to be it's going to be good. It's going to be interesting to see the design direction that they're going in. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot there's going to be a lot at, at stake with this like the you know, is this going to be diff, more difficult than 6 point uh are they going to integrate sorry, are they going to integrate a fight sequence as they did with the phasing of the Grand Master? Is it going to have uh the end boss going to be a big reveal of the future is Kabam going to put in the way that they um, 
Oh, did they create... I can't remember if they did with the last 6.4 beta, they created mystery around the character, so it wasn't actually a character. They, they did, yeah. So there was a select group of people who did actually get to fight the Grandmaster, and my understanding is those people were under NDA. Ah, right, okay. So, so most people in the most people in the in the public edition did not see the Grandmaster there. Now we all knew it was going to be the Grandmaster, hmm. but um, yeah, that wasn't something that everybody could fight. Ah, right. That's that's going to be the thing. Is that like who is the first boss that's going to be faced off against? Is this going to be the story that interworks with what you know? The rumors are even going to be that it's uh, from my rumor. Well, not my own my rumor, but my thought is that it's going to be grieve at the end of all things. Is it going to be Grandmaster Prime? Is it going to be uh, entropy in some kind of um, real life form that they're able? Or this is this is going to be something that is part of the story going to the seven act. Oh, I mean, I can't believe I'm even saying so much. Like, <laughs> it's, well, it's not technically Act Seven, but it's Act One of Book Two Point Four. God, does that even make sense? Or four point six, <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Yeah, we we're gonna have to figure out our numbering system for this, right? Because is it gonna be two point one point one point one? Is that the first <laughs> oh, first no. map in uh, in book two, act one, chapter? I I see it. my my head's exploding. Yeah. yeah, this. Yeah, are we gonna are we gonna have to call this B two act one point? Four, no, six, <laughs> boss. Jesus right. Christ. It can, yeah. Only Kabam right, can make things simple. Right. Well, you know what? It's going to be a it's gonna be a 20 million health pool mojo. That's what it's going to be. Call uh, it. Bleh. And you'll only be able to defeat him with Red Guardian because Red Guardian doesn't get buffs. And oh. can't be can't be degen to death. That's every it. every time I hear someone... <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to be exactly it. By the way, every yeah, time it's I gonna he- be It's going to be flow... It's gonna be it's gonna be like uh, flow on steroids uh, is the boss node. That's flow, what it's called. Flow, flow on steroids and siphon, and <laughs> yep. siphon there for just for extra good measure. measure. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Every time I hear Red Guardian, I want to follow up with Leviosa. I don't know why. <laughs> Red Guardian Leviosa, Leviosa. Uh, I don't know. Like every time I hear that, but um, yeah. I, next week is gonna have to be a bit busier week, I think, for us because we. Oh were, yeah. We were kind of. Like, we tried to put together the podcast for episode 15 and it was like, well, there's sort of things going on that we could talk about, but at the same time, there's not anything extra. There's not something saying, okay, well, you know, two weeks time, we've got this, we've got, um, the, the new champions. We'll probably get an idea of like what, you know, how good they are, like as of next week flowing. Um, one thing that we've decided to do is like we'll have to kind of get uh, a guest on at some point. So, but we'll just have to see like how next week goes. But uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything that's happened last week and some more. Yes, so, we have. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking probably like uh, maybe we should do a Act Seven Act or but whatever the new th- the new thing the new beta tomorrow a kind of a, a mop up session with somebody. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of people in uh, in the community that are going to be streaming that, talking about that. So um, I'm sure Cam is going to um, issue his usual seven pages of feedback mm-hmm. uh, regarding the beta. So uh, it's going to be a lot of a lot of thought going around the community about. It. Okay, so that has been the podcast. Dan, what are you up to next week? Uh, next week, I am. Um, I am working on a video on best uh, synergy teams for incursions. So that video. Nice. You know, Sunday, so I spent a lot of time and looking at different synergies, and I'm trying to put together teams from three different classes that uh, will work really well in incursions together. Nice. Nice. Um, I think next week will be for me is putting together uh, an Act 6.4 grandmaster fight thing um probably going over a few kind of problems that i had solutions to said problems champions i'd choose next time and and just the the openings and maybe my thoughts on where act six has left us and where we're going whether or not it's more of a you know whether or not questions about the skill factor being too much an overriding factor to enjoyment of the game loads Mm -hmm. of different things as well um 
But yeah, you can catch Dan on Twitter on his site, uh, frontlinemcc.blog. Is that correct? Frontlinemcc.home.blog. Dot home dot blog. Links are in the bio, and obviously make it your homepage. That's that give you all the information. Get all the news. Boom, boom, boom! Right there with the information. Right there. Make it your homepage. Uh, and as well, obviously, you can find me where you can find me. We're available on YouTube, Spotify. What's the other ones? iTunes and SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah, thank you. You saved me there. Uh, and we'll <laughs> see. We'll see you all next week. Maybe it'll be a mop-up session from Act Seven. Sorry, Book Two, Act One, uh, whatever we're calling it this week. And uh, see you all very soon. Bye bye.